Yes, students, check out question number 19, Opus Technologies Limited. Yes, mark this question also important. Now, Opus Technologies Limited, an Indian IT firm, is planning to, IT company is planning to make an investment through a wholly owned subsidiary in a software project in China. So, in simple, it wants to make some investment in China with a shelf life of two years. The inflation in China is 8%. The operating cash flows are received at the end of the year. So, Opus is an Indian company which wants to invest in China. Okay, so this is what we understand and we are going to get some cash flows at the end and for two years. For the project, an initial investment of Chinese yuan 30 lakh will be in land and the land will be sold after completion of the project at an estimated value of 35 lakhs. No depreciation on land. Ulta, you are going to get some 5 lakh capital appreciation also. 10 lakh Chinese yuan. The project requires an office complex at a cost of 15 lakhs, this is building cost, at the beginning of the project. The complex will be depreciated on SLM basis over 2 years, that means 7 lakh 50 thousand with a zero salvage value. 7 lakh 50 thousand rupees depreciation you can claim. This complex and zero salvage value as per their tax, tax loss. The complex is expected to fetch 5 lakh yuan at the end of the project, that means this is, see for the purpose of taxation, Cost is 15 lakhs minus salvage is 0, you can claim depreciation. But if at all you get any salvage value, you have to pay the tax, whatever. The company is planning to raise the required funds through a GDR in Mauritius. Each GDR will have 5 common shares of the company, which is currently traded 200. So, 5 into 200, 1000 rupees is 1 cost of 1 GDR in rupee terms. In the domestic market, the company is currently paid dividend of 25%, which is expected to grow as 10%. So, this is D0, this is G. The total cost is issued, issued uh, cost is estimated to be 1% of the issue size. Okay, why they have given me this information for KE? I have to calculate KE, which is nothing but GDR. We have already done this type of questions. The annual sales are expected to be 10,000 units at the rate of 500 joint zone. The C, uh, that means 500 into 10,000 I am going to get for 2 years. The price per unit is expected to rise at a rate of inflation. That means 2 year, 2 different prices. Variable operating cost for 40% of the sales. Fixed operating cost will be Chinese on 22 lakhs per year expected to rise at the rate of inflation. Okay, so that means I have got a 2 year cash flows. 2 different cash flows. The tax rate applicable in China for income and capital gain is 25%. So, both because you have got land capital gain and uh, building capital gain and income also 25%. As per government of India policy, no further tax shall be payable in India, no taxation in India. Spot rate they have given and the nominal interest rate in India is 12% and 10% in China respectively. International parity conditions hold. Okay. So, now that means IRP theory. I need to convert that. I need to find out the expected spot price and follow the home currency approach. Identify the expected future cash flows in China. Okay, so your future cash flows, this particular cash flows I need to identify and determine that means first calculation should be on the cash flows. Then I have to do a separate calculation for NPV of the project in Chinese yuan. So that means, see look this question they have given me interest rate and they said parity condition also hold good. But they specifically told you do foreign currency approach, no home currency approach. Home currency approach is not applicable here. So, I am not going to find out the exchange rates. Determine whether Opus technology should go for the project or not, assuming there is neither restriction on the transfer of funds from China to India, nor any charges or taxes payable for the transfer of funds. Okay, for the second part of the question. We understand that yes, we have to follow home currency approach because they said that there is no restriction. If there is no restriction, what I will do? I will try to get that cash flows. Whatever I have earned in China, I will get as and when I have earned it. So, in that case, this information is necessary to calculate that expected spot price. Okay, so this information will be necessary for me. I hope it's clear, students. The question is clear. Okay. So let us do the working. First working note one, calculation of the exchange rates using IRP. Why? This is required for the second question, not for the first question. 
so spot rate they have given me what is 9.5 inflation in india versus inflation in china because china what the exchange rate they have given is rupee per yuan chinese yuan so chinese yuan is my base currency so i'm going to get 9.67 at the end of the first year at the end of the second year i'm going to get 9.85 taking 9.67 as this spot for the second year you can note down this so this is my working note number one i'll proceed further I, I hope there is no doubt in this particular slide. Now calculation of the required rate of return. How do I calculate the required rate of return? I need KE. Remember the KE here, you are going to issue GDRs. And we have already worked out what is my cost of equity is D1. What is my D1? Look, rupees 10 is the face value. Have they given you the face value? Yes, face value is 10 rupees. 25% dividend is expected today now at the end of the year i need a d1 so multiply with the growth factor so and i take all these three factors i get d1 per share but my each gdr is represented by five shares so i got total dividend for five shares divided by market price 200 per unit in per share into five i got the total price into issue expenses i to minus 0.99 plus growth so when I solve this equation, I get 11.39%. These few questions we have already solved earlier also. You can note down this. Yes, I have done the working note for the KE. We have done the working note for the, what is that called? The, uh, exchange rates. Okay. So next we will move on to the working note 3. What is my salvage value net of tax? See, you have got a salvage value of 35 lakh and 5 lakhs correct what is your cost you're going to deduct that this is what you're going to get at the end after two years then you sell what is that you can deduct so you have to uh, pay that when you get the salvage value you have to pay that tax how much is the tax see on 35 lakhs you deduct your cost of 30 lakhs so you get 5 lakhs as the capital gain into 25 percent but when it comes to office building 5 lakh is what you recover, what you get as a salvage value. But there is a zero book value because everything is depreciated. So into 25%, 1 lakh 25. So net of salvage value, net of tax, you get a salvage value of 33 lakh 75,000 and 3 lakh 75,000. Let us keep this as a working note number 3. I hope it's clear here. this one if capital gain was not there straight up i would have taken this generally but here there is a capital gain yes i'll proceed further now calculation of mpv in chinese yuan okay how much is your number of units Ten thousand. how much is your contribution like sales minus variable cost if you want you can do sales then you can do that variable cost or one and the same the 500 per unit is the selling price into 40 percent is a variable cost nothing but 60 percent is your profit margin this is you are going to get 324 500 into 0.6 into 1.08 okay because see 500 is today if you see annual sales expected to be the rate of 500 per unit the price of unit is expected to raise at the rate of inflation okay so here we are going to assume that the chinese see alternatively you can assume that 500 because they said annual sales are expected to be at the rate of 500 per unit so first you can say that look 500 is itself is my year one and 500 into 1.08 is equal to year two you can make an assumption that also because question is not very clear here here what they have done look 500 is today at the end of the year you get 500 into 60 percent you get the profit contribution into 1.08 first year into 1.08 for the second year 349.0 this into 1.08 gives you 349.9 this is your contribution okay into number of units you get the total contribution in chinese yuan okay so this is in chinese yuan next you deduct the fixed cost 23 lakh 76 thousand 
and they said that the fixed cost is also going to increase by the rate of inflation. Twenty-three lakh seventy-six thousand into one point zero eight gives you twenty-five lakh sixty-six thousand. Then you are going to get cash flow before tax. You are going to deduct the depreciation on the office building. On land, there is no depreciation. On office building, fifteen lakhs minus zero salvage value for depreciation purpose divided by two seven lakh fifty each you can claim. You got profit before tax. I hope all the numbers are clear. All the workings are clear to you. Yes, there is a confusion with regard to this price. It is all a matter of assumption. Here it is assumed that. 500 is the current price okay i can proceed further yeah, 183120 chalo let me further go further i am going to deduct 25% tax 114 into 25% 28100 add back the depreciation okay so there is no capital capex there is no working capital so i got cf80 cash flow after tax okay there is no Working capital. So now I am going to add back. The capex is not there because whatever inflows, like this, they have not told me any capex. Working capital is also not there. But I am going to get a salvage value. Actually, you can skip this step. You are going to add a salvage value from working note number two. So you get FCF free cash flow eight lakh thirty five five hundred or forty six lakhs thirty seven thousand Chinese yuan. Now present value factor eleven point three nine percent. Which we have used uh, through GDR, I multiply it. I get the free cash flows, seven lakh fifty, and thirty-seven lakh thirty-seven thousand. So if I find out the NPV, okay, so I add this seven lakh fifty thousand twenty-eight plus twenty thirty-seven lakh thirty-seven thousand six ninety-six. I spend thirty-eight lakh twelve thousand six ninety-eight. How much is my outflow today? I am going to invest thirty lakhs in land, fifteen lakhs, forty-five lakhs. I am going to invest. I'll proceed further. I'll move to the next slide. I hope all the numbers are clear here. So, my total cash. See, this is my total cash flows. That's it. Question one A, because there are two questions. Identify the expected cash flows in China. This is my Chinese yuan expected cash flows in China. That's it. First part of the question. What is NPV of the project? So, I have to do a separate working. I can't simply add here. Present value factor, this thing, uh, the outflow. This is my NPV. I have to do a separate working because they asked me separately. Free cash flow we have done. I'll proceed further. Yes, my NPV, total cash inflows. I'm going to write 44 lakh 87,000. Outflow will be 45 lakh, 35 lakhs for the land plus 15 lakhs for 30 lakhs for the land, 15 lakhs for the building. So my NPV is negative. So reject the project. i hope it's clear you can't club this sir in previous step only you can't do it because they asked you specifically yes so can we proceed further students i hope it's clear now should you go for the project assuming you repatriate everything okay so here we need to evaluate is it beneficial this is understanding purpose not part of examination to remit each year cash flows to india or reinvest in china and bring cash only at the end of the year Again, assume that FCF has not earned any interest because the question is very silent. You remember in one of the US case, there is a restriction on repatriation, and that US block refunds earned four percent. Okay, but here they have not told you anything, so nothing. We are not going to consider any assumptions here. We assume that nothing has earned. Okay, I'll proceed further. Second, NPV of the funds if we transferred or repatriated immediately, home currency approach. Okay, so this is not required to be written. First. immediate repatriation so free cash flows you got for 45 lakhs outflow chinese yuan 8 lakh 35 and 46 lakhs you have determined the exchange rate 9.5 in working note number 1 9.67 9.85 you have got a free cash flows in rupee so 4 crore 27 lakhs 80 lakhs and 4 lakhs 4 crore 56 lakhs present value factor at the rate of 12% Okay, why twelve percent you have taken? Because in nominal interest rate in India, because that project for investment in GDR, okay, that is only for the foreign currency approach you have to take. Since you are doing home currency approach, you have to take the borrowing rate in India, nominal interest rate in India. You need to take as a discounting factor. This is one catch you have to remember, students. 
you can't use their GDR rate because that is for the Chinese project. Present value of the free cash flows because see here you are issuing you wanted Chinese yuan for this you issued the fund Chinese yuan you raised through GDR in Mauritius okay. So that that GDR is meant specifically for the Chinese project or the K will be Chinese project. If you are repatriating in India, you should be using 12. So you got a free cash flow. So MPV is positive. So you have to accept the project. This is for immediate repatriation. Okay, question is very silent uh, whether to do it in immediate or hold it and transfer. Question is not telling you anything. But when you look at the solution, you see that there are two assumptions. So in the examination, you may get two assumptions. One immediate repatriation. And repatriate at the end of year two. There are two possibilities. So now we will move to the repatriation at the end of the year two. Today there is an outflow at 9.5. Second year don't remit, but you bring, get the total money at 54 lakhs at the second year. Okay, so both these 835 plus 46 lakh 37,000, you get 54 lakh 32,840 next year. Present uh, exchange rates are given. You multiply with the free cash flow. Okay, here my base currency is Chinese yuan and my uh, my uh, transaction currency is Chinese yuan and base currency is also Chinese yuan. So I am going to multiply. Present value factor at 12 percent. I see that yes, there is a positive NPV, so you have to accept the project. So this variation, like assumption, repatriation today only, repatriation after two years, at the end of second year. So this is not given in the question, but you have to. Work. I hope it's clear, students. You don't have any doubt. This is a simple problem. But all the three projects, uh, case studies are given as a separating. So please mark it important. Yes, can we proceed to the next question? The next is an examination question of January 21. A proposed fund in investment involves creation of a plant with the annual output of 1 million units. Okay, so there is one output of 10 lakh units are there. Entire production will be exported at a selling price of USD 10 per unit. So 10 lakh into 10 per unit, 1 crore rupees, 1 crore dollars, you are going to get a revenue. At the current exchange rate of dollar, the cost of local production equal to USD 6 per unit. So for dollar 4, 40 lakhs is the profit. Dollar is expected to decline by 10% or 15%, we don't know. Either the dollar will be same or it is going to decline by 10 or 15. The change in the local cost of production and probability of the expected current level they are given. So if it is the current same then it will remain at 4 rupees per dollar USD 6 per unit that is my cost of production. If the dollar is going to decline by 10 percent then the local cost of production is going to get reduced by 0 0.3 dollars per unit that means it will become 5.7 dollars per unit today it is 6 and if it is going to reduce by 15 percent additional 5.15 so 6 minus 0 0.45 0 0.3 plus 0 0.15 it will become dollar 5.55 per unit this is my cost of production and this is the probability and whenever they give me probability in all assessment problems, see we are not going with the most likely method, we are going to go with the expected value method. The plant at the current exchange rate will have a depreciation of US dollar 1 million annually. Now there is a catch in the suggested answer. What they have done, see, when I have got a US dollar 1 million as a depreciation, irrespective of decline in the value, my dollar 10 lakh depreciation should remain the same. But what they have done, they have depreciated this all. They have like today 1 million, if it depreciates then 9 million, if it depreciates by then 8.5 million, like they have done, reduce that amount of depreciation also. Alternatively, somebody will assume that look, irrespective of my dollar changes, my depreciation will remain constant, that assumption also holds true. But the suggested answer has not told you alternatively you can do like that. 
but that makes sense. You consider the constant depreciation. Assume local tax to be 30 percent. Okay. You are required to find out annual cash flow after tax under different scenarios of exchange rate. Okay. I need to have three scenarios. 0, 10 percent fall, 15 percent fall and into cash flow after tax CFAT. What is expected value of CFAT assuming low repatriation? So you got CFAT multiply with the probability you get expected value of CFAT. Weighability of the investment proposal assuming investment initial investment of 25 million okay outflow happening and working capital with the required rate of return is KE required rate of return is 11 percent on the basis of CFAT arrived in 2 expected value. The CFAT will grow 3 percent per annum in perpetuity okay. So this is now nothing but the growth factor. This is what you are going to have. So we are going to use this growth factor. See now what they are asking viability of the project intrinsic value. See now you have got one expected CFAT. So what is the present value of future cash flows which is nothing but P0 is nothing but expected CFAT divided by 11 percent minus growth 3 percent. So it gives the present value of the future cash flow. Your outflow is 25 million and you take a decision. Okay, there is a little tricky different way they have given. Okay, let us solve this first annual cash flow. So they said calculate under three scenarios. So your unit sale is 10 lakh, 10 lakh, 10 lakh. Selling price is 10 per unit. Cost per unit is 6. Under scenario 2, 10 percent fall, it is 5.7. Under scenario 3, 15 percent fall, it is 5.55. So you get profit per unit as 4. Multiply with the 10 units sale. You get total profit dollar 40 lakhs, 43 lakhs, 44 lakhs, 50 thousand. Okay, is there any other cost involved? Is there a taxation involved? Yes, there is a depreciation. How much? It is 1 million, 10 lakh dollars. Okay, so somebody may say that look, I will consider all the three or I will reduce it according to the depreciation. Okay, so in the suggested answer, they have reduced this depreciation according to the scenario, like 10 percent fall, 15 percent fall. So you got profit before tax, you are going to deduct the tax at 30 percent because the tax is that local tax rate is 30 percent and add back the depreciation. Okay, I will move further. I hope it is clear. Tax reduction is clear to you, 30 percent reduction. Yes, I will add back the depreciation and I get cash flow after tax. The first part of the question is done. They asked me what is my cash flow after tax, annual cash flow after tax under three different scenarios. Okay, you have, you have to do the way the what they have asked. Don't put a present value here or all the stuff. They asked cash flow, do the cash. Done. I can proceed further. You are clear. Yes, I will move to the next slide. Second part of the question: what is my expected CFAT? So you have got all the cash flows. Multiply with the probability. So you get cash flow after tax 32 lakhs 26 thousand. This is expected cash flow after tax. I hope it is clear. Now I will move to the third question. Viability of the in investment proposal assuming initial investment is 25 and the working capital with the required rate of return is 11 percent on the investment. Okay, on plant and working capital you are got outflow of 25 and you get this 32 lakh 26 thousand in perpetuity. So, what is the present value of this perpetuity? Now, I will move further, we move to the next slide. So, you have got 32 lakh 26 thousand, this is D0 multiplied by 1.03, I got FCF1. See, value of the firm today is nothing but FCF1. What you got FCF today? 0 into 1.03 into growth 1 plus g give you fcf1 divided by ke they told you minus g so this is going to give you 4 crore 15 lakh 34 thousand 750 so is it viable since npv is positive how much 4 crore 15 lakh is what you are going to get 2 crore 50 lakh is what you have invested 25 million dollars so 1 crore 65 lakhs is the positive npv 
so the project should be accepted yes that's a simple question only catch here is on the depreciation you have to deduct the depreciation proportionate that's the only catch here. yes students i hope it's clear and we can move to the last question of this particular chapter it's a very simple chapter all capital budgeting related yes before we go into the last question just we will understand something called an adjusted npv in your study material there is a theory pertaining to this what is an adjusted net present value the adjusted present value is the net present value of a project or a company if financed solely by the equity plus the present value of uh, the financing benefits which are additional effects of the debt you see look you have one project that project you are financing through equity only what is the present value of that that the net present value of the project with the equity plus what you are going to do you have taken a debt what is the present value of benefits that you add together you call it adjusted and you have to solve it this way only because there was one surprise in november 20 they asked one question on this adjusted present value and if you open your study material there is one discussion about this adjusted present value it is used in evaluating foreign project the apv model is the value additive approach capital budgeting process that is cash flow considered individually and discounted at a rate of substitution with the risk involved different components of the discounted separately cash flows are separated different components of the cash flows are discounted separately that means you are going to use multiple different exchange rates sorry not exchange rates discounting rates interest rates to discount the different different type of cash flow like loan related cash flows you use the interest rate of the loan the business related cash flows you are going to use the ke the apv method uses different discounting rates for different segments of the total cash flows depending upon degree of certainty attached with the each of the cash flows the financial analysis tests the basic viability of the foreign project before accounting complexities if the project is feasible no further addition evaluation is done if not feasible additional evaluation is done taking other complexities okay with this keeping in mind adjusted present value we will go into the in one question okay the apv model is represented as present value of the investment outlay that means outflow is nothing but plus present value of the operating cash flows sum of present value of operating cash flows plus sum of present value of the interest tax yield that means when you have taken debt you have got a tax savings on the interest now present value of the interest subsidies so tax savings in the year due to financial mix adopted before tax value interest subsidies home currency year 1 due to project specific financing before tax cost of dollar home currency approach okay we'll solve one question then we'll have a better understanding about this okay take out question number 21 you can mark this question important because again it might come in any other form so be careful about this question the management of a multinational company is engaged in the construction of infrastructure project a proposal to construct a toll road in nepal under the consideration of the management okay foreign project the following information is available the initial investment will be in the purchasing of the equipment costing 260000 us dollars this is the outflow the economic life of the equipment is 10 years that means 25 is the depreciation equipment will be charged on the flm basis 25 is the depreciation ebitda earnings before interest depreciation tax and amortization to be collected from the toll project is 33 lakhs before depreciation and interest and taxes for a period of 20 years look you can charge depreciation for 10 years ebitda you are going to get for 20 years that means tax benefit tax savings on depreciation you are going to get for 10 years only ebitda you are going to get 20 years to encourage investment in nepalese government in the investment comma nepalese government is offering 15 year term loan of usd 150 lakhs so you are getting loan also at a interest rate of 6% per annum so you are taken one loan and on that loan you are paying interest to the government nepalese government the interest is to be paid annually the loan will be repaid in 15 years look depreciation is for 10 years what you save tax ebitda you will collect for 20 years net of tax you will see cash flows you taken on loan on which you are paying interest at 6% and that is for 15 years 
and the entire loan is like a bullet loan for repayment. You have a principal you repay at the end of the fifteenth year. The required rate of return for the project under all equity financing is twelve percent. That means if you have financed only through equity, it's twelve percent is the key. All the project cash flows will be twelve percent. Post tax cost of debt is five point six percent. Corporate rate is thirty percent. Okay, so the cost of debt (KD) is five point six percent. Anything related to the interest, you are going to discount at five point six. And corporate rate is thirty percent. All cash flows will be in dollars. Dollars. You are required to advise the management on viability of the proposal. That means NPV. I need to find out how finding out adjusted NPV, not just NPV. Otherwise, we would have worked out the NPV. It's like an unconventional bond. I could have worked out some cash flows for fifteen years or twenty years, whatever. I could have worked out, but it's an adjusted. Now, which factors I need to take? Present value of interest uh, investment annuity twelve percent ten. That means this KE is five point. That means this is for depreciation related for ten years. They have given me present value annuity factor twelve percent for twenty years for EBITDA. They have given me present value annuity factor at eight percent. For 15 years, that is for the loan, and present value factor at 8% for, for this is for the interest loan interest. Present value factor at 8% for 15 years. This is for the principal repayment. Okay, so they have given me so nine KD and all. I am going to ignore it since they have already given me the present value factors. Okay, so I am going to ignore. I am going to just going to take the same thing. Okay, so now working note one. NPV, all equity finance. We call it a base NPV. Now, how much is your initial investment in time zero? You spent two fifty lakhs. Present value factor is one. Now you are going to get EBITDA one to twenty years, same thirty three point three three. So you are going to use present value annuity factor of seven point four six nine, which is given here in the question. Then there is a tax on this EBITDA, one to twenty years, nine point nine at the rate of thirty percent. That also you are going to multiply with this twelve percent present value factor. Then there is a depreciation, one to ten years only. How much? Twenty five per annum. On this, there is a tax savings because depreciation otherwise has got no role to play here. You have got a tax saving on depreciation, which is thirty percent of twenty-five. So you are going to multiply the seven point five for one to ten years with the present value factor of twelve percent for ten years. So you multiply everything and you get the total present value of all the cash net present. Actually, you got a net present value because this is the outflow. This is all the inflows. You get a net present value. I hope it's clear, students. We can proceed further. Yes, sir. Now we will move on to the present value of impact of financing by debt. Okay, so first one we found out the base NPV. Okay, without considering the impact of debt. Now, what if I have got the debt into my business? So first thing is you will say, look, today inflow from loan is one fifty lakhs dollar. And see, that is the beauty of adjusted NPV. In NPV. My debt and equity, everything I will discount at one rate. I showed you that theory. In adjusted NPV, what happens is equity portion I will discount at a different rate of a uh, different interest rate, and my the debt portion I am going to discount at a different interest rate. Now, why did I choose eight percent and the previous one? How much is my previous one? Fifteen percent, eight percent, and twelve percent because they have given me in the question itself. Like you have to take. These present value factors. Okay, so this is that's why I took twelve percent here. Now I will take eight percent. I say, look, my outflow inflow today is one fifty. Now I pay interest at the coupon rate of six percent on one fifty, which is nine for one to fifteen years. Its present value annuity factor is eight point five five nine. So nine into eight point five five nine. This is seventy seven. Point zero three one. Then there is a tax savings on the interest at the rate of thirty percent, which is two point seven zero. 
for 1 to 15 years into present value annuity factor. It comes to 23.109. Now principal repayment, I am doing 15th year, 150 into present value factor 0.315. So I have got 47.25. So I said my net present value because this is the inflow, this is the outflow, this is all the interest outflows, tax savings is 48.828. I hope it's clear students. So that is the adjusted NPV where I take two different fact, uh, discount rates for two different type of cash flows. Debt with the debt cash flows, the debt discount factor, equity with the without equity. So now I will find out the adjusted NPV. How? I will add, take the base NPV discounted at 12%. And present value of impact of financing at 8%, I add both. I say my net NPV is 13.737. Since it is positive, I can accept the project. So this is the uh, adjustment related to adjusted NPV. These are the workings. I hope it's clear, students. You can pause the video. You can work out this. You can refer my PDF. I'll proceed further. Now, in the Suggested answer, they have said one alternative method also. I will just show you. Okay, let, let us look into the suggested answer. Suggested answer says the first thing same. Look, NPV or my base NPV is calculated at 12% discount factor for equity factors. So, you get 35.091. Then impact of financing you will consider at 8%. Different, different loan, interest, tax savings, principal, etc. You say 48. You add both. You get NPV. Alternatively, Instead of present value of overall impact of the financing, since the interest comes, you pay the interest, you get the cash flow, you pay the cash flow of 150, you just take the present value of impact of tax only on the interest. And if you consider that, then the base NPV is 35.091 and your tax benefit on the interest will be 23.109. You have got a negative NPV. Since the NPV is negative, you should not accept the project. This is all about your adjusted NPV. There is only one question and this is based on theory is one of type of question students. You need not focus much on this. Just understand this concept. Okay. I hope it is clear. So, with this we are done with this chapter. So, we will move on to the next chapter in the next class. Thank you.